Look, I get it. You want to start an AI agency, but there's one massive problem. You have no track record, no social proof, and no idea how to create an offer that actually converts. But what if I told you that you could create an irresistible AI offer today, even as a complete beginner, the client simply can't refuse. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to create a no brainer AI offer that makes people feel stupid saying no to. And the best part, you don't need any previous experience or testimonials to make this work. Okay, so let's dive right into it. So in this in this presentation, I'm going to be showing you um, the value creation and the difference between service and offer and variables you can control, offer examples and templates, and who to reach out, and finally action steps and recap. So yeah, how to create a no-brainer AI offer as a beginner with no track record, no social proof. When it comes to offer, you're probably hearing a lot about value. People always say you need to provide insane value in your offer. You need to provide insane value upfront without any risk, right? But the thing is, um, what exactly is value? There are so many definitions out there. And to be honest, nothing really resonated with me. It was like so vague and I wasn't able to like fully comprehend what value means. And I finally found this book called 100 million offer from Alex Hormozzi. And this book answered my question very precisely. So if I were to summarize this book, 100 million offer into, you know, one visual or one equation, it's probably going to be the value equation here. And this value equation breaks value into four different variables that are more easy to understand and more easy to operationalize. So let's dive right into the value equation itself. There are four main, main variables. There are two variables on top, which are dream outcome and perceived likelihood of achievement. And dream outcome is basically, uh, if things go well, what kind of results they're gonna get out of your service. And perceived likelihood of achievement is basically um, how likely it is that your client will get the dream outcome from your service. And this is not the exact likelihood of achievement, it's more like a perceived likelihood achievement from your client side. So mostly this, this comes from reviews or testimonials from third party verifications, not from your promise or your, you know, statements. And at the bottom, there are two variables called time delay and effort and sacrifice. And time delay is basically uh, how long does it take to get the dream outcome through your service. And effort and sacrifice is basically, um, the things that your client need to do in order to get the research out of your service. So this effort and sacrifice is not your effort and sacrifice to, to deliver the research. This is the effort and sacrifice that your client need to incur in order to get the research out of your service. So in order to maximize value, you want to maximize those two variables on top and you want to minimize those two variables at the bottom of the equation. Okay, now you know that four variables that create value, and let's look into um, let's look into detail so that you know we can figure out what kind of variables that we have control over. So, as a beginner, we have three variables we can control. To be honest, and we want to make these variables in our favor, right? So, first variable is dream outcome, and as a beginner, of course you can make a big promise upfront, but it's kind of risky because if you make a big promise and you don't keep the promise, uh, never going to work with that client again. So I recommend, you know, under promise and over deliver. So basically setting the expectation pretty low in the first place, because, you know, we're going to be offering this for free. So under promise and over deliver. And for time delay, you want to get your first solution up and running in three days or less. And the result of that service or implementation should be delivered under 30 days. So just keep keep those numbers in your head. Three days uh, for for a solution implementation and results under 30 days. And for effort and sacrifice, this is something that I've um, overlooked a lot of times. You know, this is really important that your client will never know the details of your solution to solve their problem. So you want to have them describe verbally in the meeting, instead of like, just, you know, asking a client to, you know, come up with like fully, fully detailed, like requirements or, you know, 
in details. You just want to, you know, have a conversation with them and you, you want to ex extract requirements from a developer perspective and you crystallize the details. This is a mistake a lot of people make in the first place. So you want to, you want to be a consultant to, to crystallize the requirements to solve your problem. And lastly, perceived likelihood achievement. And I'll say like, this is something that we don't have control over as a beginner because we don't have any um, reviews and testimonials that can potentially, you know, uplift this variable. Yeah. So I think there are three variables, dream outcome, time delay, and effort and sacrifice. You want to set the distant dream outcome expectation and you want to get the time delay and effort and sacrifice as low as possible for your client. Now, you know, the four variables of the value equation. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, difference between the service and your offer. So you need to make a clear disti distinction between your service and your offer, because your service is not an offer basically. And a as an AI agency owner, well, there are three main pillars. Um, there are three main you know, types of services that you can offer to businesses. First is automation. And second one is text-based agents. And the third one is food agents, which is, you know, probably uh, the fastest growing services that AI agency offer. And here's why this matters, because most beginners make, the, make this huge mistake of just offering a service. So they say things like, I build AI chatbots, chatbots for your business. And this is not an offer. That's just a service description. And this statement is, you know, it's focused on the task itself, building a chatbot. And your client will say something like, oh, okay, cool, but how is it different from other services? How is it different from what others offer? And price sensitivity is probably on a high because your clients will compare based on cost, not the value you provide. This is a common mistake a lot of people make. So let's go to the offer right here. So this is the real offer. We help e-commerce brands reduce customer support costs by 40% in 90 days with a fully automated AI chatbot, custom training on your FAQs, 24-7 support integration, real-time analytics, and a performance guarantee, or you don't pay. I think I think we can work on this to you know make it a little bit better and concise, but you get the idea. So it doesn't really focus on what you are building. It, it really focuses on transformation and benefits that we're going to get once they implement your service. So as you can see, um, this sentence includes dream outcomes and it would save time. And, you know, it's, it basically said it will decrease support costs by 40%. And also it includes time delay. And basically this offer guarantees uh, the performance in 90 days of delivery and effort, effort and sacrifice is basically, um, you know, it's not directly included in here, but you know, agency will take care of all the, you know, setup, training and support as well. So you want, you want to understand the difference between service. So you want to understand the difference between service and your offer. So instead of, you know, just saying, uh, we provide AI type of services or we provide, you know, AI agents for your businesses, which is, um, task centered. You're gonna make a shift to really focus on the result and the benefit that your client will get. Now that you know the value equation and the key differences between a service and an offer, and let's dive right into actually creating your offer. Remember, your offer must begin by addressing a specific problem your prospect is facing. Simply asking what problems you have in your business is too broad and generic. You can overwhelm your prospects or leave them unsure of where to start, often leading them to list every issues they have, which makes it hard for you to identify the one problem where your solution will make the biggest impact. So instead of using a broad question like this, use a targeted magic question that zeroes in on the most pressing issue your solution can solve. So you wanna ask this magic question, which is asking if there's any human doing the work that your service can replace or enhance. So for example, if you're running a voice AI agency, you'll probably be asking oh, any phone tasks in your business or any, if you want to be like more specific, you can, uh, you can ask something like, oh, um, are you handling calls from your clients or are you doing, are you working on your leads yourself? So this question is really tactical because it really narrows down this question um, 
that could be answered in yes or no, basically. And they can immediately know what kind of problems they face in their business. So you can make a sales conversation really, really smoothly. So if you ask this question and your, your prospect said yes to your question, then you can create an offer that addresses their problem. So for example, you say, so you probably say, um, great, I'll, I'll build an AI receptionist to reduce the support cost by 3% in three days for completely free. In return, I just want you to actually use it and give me honest feedback. And this offer is, you know, based on the offer template that I use. Um, this template is basically goes like this. I will build service, whatever the service you offer, that dream outcome, which is the positive result or benefit that we get from your service in time delay, completely for free. In return, I just wanted to actually use it and give me honest feedback. I mean, the actual offer is basically the first line, first sentence, but I wanted to add this, you know, second sentence because, you know, by adding this sentence, you can basically um, justify your free work, right? So a lot of people probably be asking like, oh, why are you doing this for free, right? They might be thinking like, oh, maybe there might be some, you know, hidden cost associated with it, or they might be questioning your true intention behind your free work, probably. So in order to address that, or in order to overcome that, you know, doubt, you can just simply add this. In return, I just want you to actually use it and give me honest feedback. By adding this, you can, you know, justify your free work because you're basically telling them, oh, I'm going to be offering this, my service for free because I don't have any previous experience. So I want to learn and I just want to get real reviews from you. So I, I'm basically offering you free work. And in return, I just want you to actually use it. And I want, I want to get reviews from you to, you know, make my, make my life in the future easier. Right. Okay. Now that you understand the value equation and the difference between offer and service, and we just went through the exact process, you know, of prospecting basically. So just asking questions to get your a personalized offer for your client. And now you have all this framework, right? But so we're going to pr present this offer to. So TLDR is basically, you know, leverage your network. Just, just never reach out to people you don't know. Right. I mean, I made this mistake as well as a beginner. I thought if I were to, um, create a great offer and present to people, a lot of people will say yes to my offer because it's basically free and it's just like, you know, like there's no risk associated with it. But the reality is there's actually a cost. There's actually a hidden cost that um, your prospects will incur. You're ready to reach out to people with your offer and you basically present it to uh, the prospect out of, outside outside of your network because this guy really don't know about you and just like a cold, cold audience. And it's always being a detective, you know, of who is this guy and it's probably a scam or something like that. But you have a great intention of helping him out. But the thing is, um, as soon as they open up their inbox and um, the message you sent and respond to it, you are getting his attention and time. So there's actually a cost for your prospects to respond and actually um, like go through the sales funnel, like sales process you have, right? And as you might have noticed, I'm getting a lot of cold DMs too. But even if the offer really good, if, even if the offer is really, really good, I just don't care. Like, I just don't like, I just don't look into my inbox. I, I don't even like read through it. You know what I mean? Cause you know, it's because I just don't care about what you offer. Right. Man, most likely you, you will not be able to create on a, create a personalized offer in your first contact because you, you, you need more con uh, around each prospect's needs. So you're probably just sending out, um, Cold DMs, check generate cold DMs that that will never resonate your prospects. So, since you're incurring hidden cost to to these people outside of your network, the likelihood that they will respond to your DM is really really low. And even if you get them to you know respond to your DM, it's really hard to close the deal actually.
So I just recommend just, you know, pulling up your contacts, pulling up your Insta, you know, Facebook, and just reach out to people one-on-one to your network because at least these people in your, uh, can spend t- just a little bit of time with you. You know what I mean? Without expecting nothing in return. You know what I mean? So just reach out to those people because like they already trust you in some way and they're just willing to, um, just spend time with you without anything, um, without expecting anything in return. So just go to your now. Now you have everything you need to create your own no brainer AI offer. And here, here are your action steps. First, you need to reach out to people you already know. Just don't call DMs because you are, because the cold audience will never care about your DMs eventually. And second, you need to ask the magic question about human task, basically asking uh, if there's any human work that your service can enhance or replace. And third, you want to create your offer using the template that I use. And fourth, you're, you're going to deliver so fast and iterate it so fast as well. So you want to get that, you want to get the feedback group as you know fast as possible. You just want to be very responsive to your clients' messages, and you just want to make your free clients really, really happy. And you want to get reviews or testimonials from them, and you want to get those crucial first testimonials and basically um, improving the variable that you didn't have control over before, which is uh, perceived likelihood achievement. You want to, you need them to. Um, increase your um, offering, increase uh, perceived likely achievement when you're reaching out to other people. So you wanna get those good reviews and testimonials and leverage these testimonials uh, when reaching out to other people. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Basically, reach out to people you already know, ask them a question to figure out what kind of offer you can make. And you can deliver it super fast, you can iterate it super fast, and you wanna make your client happy, and get those crucial first type of testimonials to make your offer more stronger. Basically like a flywheel of strengthening your offer. If, if you found this valuable and want to learn more about building a successful AI agency, just make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell. I'll see you in the next video.